to spend some time now helping you understand the concept of domains and forest trust relationships. So to help you understand trust relationships, let's first talk about the point of trust relationships. A trust relationship is a connection between your domains that allows them to share resources, to communicate with each other and share resources. In other words, for example, if I have a, a client computer you know, here in the examlabpractice.com domain and that client computer would like to access this uh, server over in Scotland, there's got to be a trust relationship to make that happen. Okay, now there are various types of trust relationships. When you set up a domain as part of a forest, there is an automatic trust relationship that gets built between your domains called a two-way transitive trust. Okay, two-way transitive trust. And that's what these lines here are, uh, are going to represent. Some people, when they draw trust relationships, they will generally, um, they will generally use a, a straight line or sometimes they'll use double, an arrow that, that faces both directions. Okay, that is a two-way transitive trust, what you're seeing right there. Okay, two-way means that it goes both ways. That means that uh, I could have a server in examlabpractice.com and a client in Scotland or vice versa. So the Scotland client could technically get to the server up in exam lab practice, exam lab practice person get down to the server in Scotland if you've got these trust relationships set up. Now, the other thing is, is that it is, um, it is transitive. So what does transitive mean? Transitive means it follows through. So because examlabpractice.com has a transitive trust relationship with the uk.examlabpractice.com and uk.examlabpractice.com has a trust relationship with Scotland. Well, therefore, uh, exam lab practice and Scotland trust each other. That means it follows through. In other words, if A trusts B and B trusts C, then A and B automatically trust each other. Okay. Now, that's automatic. When you join domains to a forest, they're going to automatically do that. Now, an, uh, another option for this is you can configure what are known as um, directional, one-way directional trust. Okay? One-way directional trust. And the, the one-way directional trust, what that's going to basically do is it's only going to go one direction. All right. So one, one direction, it's not going to go both directions. Let's kind of, let's expand this a little bit and I'll kind of zoom in on to give you a better understanding of what I'm saying. So if I had, let's just say I had two domains. Okay. Let's say you have domain A. All right. And you have domain B. All right. So let's add another triangle. Domain A, domain B, okay, and you don't have a two-way transitive trust set up between the two domains or any of that right now, and you want to share resources between these two, two domains, I could actually do that if I had, let's say I have a client computers in domain A that want to access servers in domain B. Um, instead of doing a two-way transitive like that, I could actually do a, a one-way directional, okay? And the, the trick to this, and usually when people represent a one-way directional trust, they'll use an arrow instead of a straight line. Um, I, I would need to make it where domain A trusts domain B in order to do that. So instead of a straight line, I'm going to draw an arrow. Now, the confusing thing to people when they use the arrows is they, they think in their head that the arrow is supposed to represent who's connecting to who. No, the arrow is specifying who is trusting who. So domain B is trusting domain A, which means domain A's clients could technically get to the server in domain B and access resources. But when it's a when it is a a one way when it's a one way directional, okay, it's that basically means that um, that domain B's clients would not be allowed to get to a server in domain A. So in other words, this guy right here, this client machine would not be able to access that server that you see right there. It's one way. It's a one way directional trust. Okay. So your, your, your two main kinds of trust are these two right here. 
okay? Two-way transitive, which goes both way and it follows through, or one-way directional trust, okay? Uh, now, there is also something referred to as a shortcut trust that I'd like to tell you a little bit about, okay? A shortcut trust. Now, a shortcut trust is going to be used when you have two domains that are uh, tran that have transitive trust, but it's the communication is being slowed down because of how slow the trust relationships are. Let me give you an example. Okay, let's say that we have uh, some client computers in Japan and some servers in Japan and some client computers in Australia and some servers in Australia. Now, let's say that at, at our at our companies here, Japan and Australia. Those two domains are going to be working on a big project together and they got to constantly communicate between their servers and clients. Now, currently with the way things are right now, the client computers in Japan and the client computers in Australia will be able to communicate with each other. Okay? But it's going to be a little bit sluggish. Okay? So imagine you get users that are complaining. This is like an exam concept here. Users are complaining that uh, when they connect from Japan to Australia or Australia to Japan, the initial authentication connection is really slow. Once the connection gets established, it's fast, but the connection is really slow. So that tells you a couple things. Number one, it tells you that there is connectivity between the two domains. The problem is the initial connection is slow. Let me tell you why that is. It's because of the transitive trust. See, what's happening is, is the machines are having to authenticate using the Kerberos protocol. And Japan is having to authenticate first with exam lab practice. Then it's having to authenticate with this other domain name, prepare for exams now. And then finally it's authenticating with Australia. And same things happen between Australia and Japan. It's having to authenticate like this and it's really slow. So what you can do is you could establish either a two-way transitive or a one-way directional. I'm going to do a two-way. All right, so I'm just going to draw a straight line, and that is called a shortcut trust. And really all it is is just a, a transitive. Okay, let me actually uh, move this over just a little bit. You know what? Let's, uh, let's just fix this real quick. I'm going to move uh, the Japan name just a little bit out of the way. All right, now we'll draw the line. So then we'll make our shortcut trust between these two domains. Now, when you do that shortcut trust like that, they can now uh, authenticate each other directly. There's no more having to um, connect up, across, and down. They can authenticate directly. And so that's going to speed things up. All right. Now, the final type of trust relationship that I want to tell you about is called a realm trust. This is spelled R-E-A-L-M, trust. And... The main thing to remember about this is this is going to be a Unix slash Linux realm. So Unix and Linux can also support Kerberos, um, which is the security protocol that Windows machines use for authentication. And so you can set up what is known as a, um, we'll call this a Unix realm, Unix slash Linux realm. You've got Unix Linux servers perhaps in there that are in this uh in this Unix or Linux realm. Maybe you've got some, we'll say some, here's the servers right here. You can actually establish a uh, uh, either the two-way transitive or the, the one-way with that as well. And you can allow resources to be shared with that Unix environment. So that is called a realm trust. Not used too often, um, but it is something that you can use to make it easier to authenticate and share resources between the Unix world and the Active Directory world. Okay, the final thing that I want to get across to you here, I'm going to kind of back up a little bit. Um, I want to talk about what a forest trust is now. And to, th to talk about what a forest trust is, I'm going to get rid of this uh, little line here. You might remember this a little bit from the earlier video, but I want to kind of reiterate it. A forest trust is a trust that is going to be set up when you have a different forest that needs to be linked with your forest. So we're going to pretend for a moment that examlabpractice.com, it's its own company, and there's another company called prepareforexamsnow.com, and they are linking up together, okay? So imagine that scenario where um, examlabpractice.com, prepareforexamsnow.com, there are two different companies. Maybe maybe it's a, a merger. Maybe examlabpractice.com 
is partnering up or merging with preparesforexamnow.com and they have their own forest. It's already set up. Could have been set up years ago. And we want to share resources with their forests. Okay? All right. So um, the only thing that we need to really keep in mind there, we need to make sure that our DNS and their DNS can see each other. We have to have some kind of a connection so that we can see each other. Some kind of WAN connection or a VPN connection connecting us together. Something like that. From there, we can actually set up a, tr a two-way transit of trust if we want, or even a one-way if we want, and that is going to be called a forest trust, okay? A forest trust is set up between two forests, all right? So you really don't have one forest here. You have two forests. This is a forest at this point. This is a forest at that point. But the benefit is we can share resources together, okay? between these two forests, all right? Okay, so hopefully that gives you now a better understanding of trust relationships in domains and forests. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again. <laughs>